I'm ranking the top 250 individuals from the pre-colonial era to today what is now Canada, and we're on number 44, Mary, two acts early. Born on the Kanawaki Reserve on October 4, 1911, she was raised by her grandparents after the death of her mother from the Spanish flu. When she turned 18, she began to look for employment, a quest that took her from her home to the United States, where she settled in Brooklyn. The neighborhood she lived in was made up of Mohawk people, many from her own area of Canada, who came to the area in the 1920s to work in the iron and steel industry of the city. While living in the city, she met Edward Early, who was an Irish-American electrical engineer. The couple married in 1938. With that marriage to a non-status indigenous person, Mary lost her indigenous status. Any woman who married a non-indigenous man lost her indigenous status under the Indian Act. In 1966, one of her friends, Florence, died of a heart attack in her arms. It was Mary's belief that being denied property rights on the Kanawaki Reserve had been a contributing factor to her death. Florence had been married to a Mohawk man from another reserve. Since he was from another reserve, she was asked to sell her house. The man then left the reserve and her. Soon after this tragic event, Mary began a series of writing and speaking campaigns to raise awareness of the issue and the impact on women who lost their status. In 1967, Mary would become involved in the Indian Rights for Indian Women. At the same time, the Royal Commission on the Status of Women in Canada was created, and this provided a platform for Mary. Mary led 30 other Mohawk women to speak before the Commission. Throughout the 1970s, the Canadian government was unwilling to address the issue of the Indian Act that robbed Indigenous women of their status, but that did not stop Mary from striving to still make change. In 1971, the Supreme Court acknowledged that the Act discriminated against Indigenous women, but ruled there was not sufficient grounds to declare the Act invalid. In 1974, she became a founding member of the Quebec Native Women's Association. In 1976, Mary was elected to the Board of Directors of the Canadian Research Institute for the Advancement of Women. On November 17, 1979, Mary was recognized for her work and she received the Governor General's Persons Case Award for her contribution to the advancement of equality for women and girls in Canada. In 1982, the First Minister's Conference was being held, involving all the Premiers and the Prime Minister coming together to discuss issues. Mary attempted to get a formal time slot to speak about her cause, but she was denied. Quebec Premier René Lévesque heard about this denial and he pledged his support for her, offering his own seat at the table. Finally, on June 28, 1985, Bill C-31 received royal assent, amending the Indian Act and creating the process for women who had lost their status to regain it. One week later, on July 5th, Mary became the first Indigenous woman to have her status reinstated in a Toronto ceremony. The day before the change to the Act, Early was awarded the Order Nationale de Québec, becoming one of the first people to receive the award. That same year, she also received the Order of Canada. The change in legislation provided 16,000 other Indigenous women and 46,000 other descendants the opportunity to regain their status. On August 21, 1996, at the age of 84, Mary died on the reserve where she was born. If you enjoy Canadian history, then check out my podcast, Canadian History X, available on all podcast platforms.